Hello everybody, it's me, Jor Mortensen, and today I am going to do the Nintendo High Characters Good to Evil. And if this Good to Evil video gets a lot of likes and views, I'll make other ones of my favorite YouTube channels. And Nintendo High is one of my favorites, so I hope you enjoy this video. But with all that said, let's go. The go For the gold medal of good, we're going to give this spot to... Princess Peach. She is a pure-hearted character in this series. She's friendly to all creatures, big and small. She's nice to the Mario brothers. Has a great relationship with Daisy. And even tried her hardest not to hurt Bowser's feelings with a rejection. The only bad thing we could say about her is her, her temper, but... Given how Pauline can frustrate her, that can be understandable. So, she gets the gold medal. The silver medal of gold is going to go to Luigi. Luigi is Mario's younger brother, and in the series, he is definitely a lot more good than his brother Mario, who we'll get to in a little bit. Luigi is also a pure heart like Peach. He's friendly to everyone. Tries his best to stay friendly, even when he's getting bullied. And even though he gets bullied, he doesn't really take that too far of him and just keeps going. One bad thing we could say about him is his anger towards Mario making fun of Bowser, but given that they're new to school, again, kind of understandable. So, and another flaw, he did turn into Mr. L, but that was not his fault. So, he's, yeah, he gets the silver medal. The bronze medal of good goes to Professor Egad. Out of all the teachers in the school, or staff, he is easily the nicest and pure heart. Once the professor and now the janitor, he helps Mario and Luigi encur by encouraging them to do bigger things, just like their parents. He knows something about their parents, which is the flaw with him. He never really tells Mario and Luigi about their parents when they have serious issues about this, but he will tell them eventually in the next season. Oh, in case you're wondering, no. This list does not include Season 2 characters, only characters from Season 1. When Season 2 gets more episodes, we'll definitely do more, but we're just going to stick with Season 1 for now. Moving on, now we have Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong, uh, he's... I don't know too much about Donkey Kong in the series, but I know he's a really friendly guy. He helped Mario out when he first came. After Mario stood up to Bowser, he was impressed by it and decided to join join up with him and become best friends. And but if there's one flaw we could say about him, it's the fact that he didn't really give Mario and Luigi a banana when they asked him for one, only just wanting a bet in return. Like seriously, what kind of friend is that? And he did forget Luigi's name, but most people forget his name, so... Yeah. Not too much of a flaw. But still, I feel bad for Luigi. And he did join the final battle in episode 8. Moving on, now we have Daisy. Daisy is kinda like Peach, but a lot more aggressive. She's willing to stand up to Bowser in a cruel, mean way. Reject Captain Falcon in a cruel way, like, Get lost, sunglasses! That part cracks me up. She could be very, pretty violent and jokes mental, especially towards Pauline. But in the end of the day, she's still a friendly princess, always supporting her boyfriend Luigi, and... And she doesn't look down on him for being who he is. She's one of the only characters. That's a really good thing to do. 
Now we have Rosalina. Okay, I was gonna put her higher, but given how she barely has any screen time, uh, I decided 6th place was a fair enough spot. Rosalina is a shy girl from outer space who attracts Luigi. She's, ex she's extremely polite when she accidentally bumps into Waluigi, not even tolerating that he did it too. And she did help Mario under no circumstance. That's pretty friendly, too. She doesn't really have any flaws, but since she barely has any time for herself on screen in Season 1, uh, this is good enough for me. Now we have Princess Zelda. Zelda was a complicated character. She isn't that... She is, doesn't get as much screen time as a lot of the characters, but... I decided to put her in the good for some a lot of good things she did. Yes, she was skeptical getting Mario and Luigi her homework, but she did agree to it only if she gets a scarf. Like, seriously, you could just buy one, Zelda. But she is extremely polite and does use polite words. She does call Mario oblivious and doesn't make it to cl clear to Link that she likes him. Went pretty obvious, but she's still really polite and supportive of Mar, of Mario and his team. Finishing off the good tier, we have Super Mario himself. All right, let's get his flaws out. He's a pretty selfish guy through most of the series. He did start off by abandoning Luigi, and he and he did back off Peach for asking him to the dance. Not officially, but it looked like it. And he, he did he was kind of the one that started off Bowser's evil rage. So with all these flaws, he still makes it in the good tier. Why? Because as many bad things he did, he did just as many good things to redeem himself. He did save the entire school. And he did apologize to his brother, promising to all be by his side from now on. And he does deeply care about Peach, and does make it up by taking her to the dance. And he didn't reject her because he didn't like her, but he was afraid of, the, of their friendship loss if it could happen. That's understandable, which just leaves him out of the gray area to you. Speaking of the gray area, that's where we're going next. These characters are not bad, just eh, kind of questionable, you must say. Welcome to the gray. Starting off this section, we have the literary angel, Pitt. Pitt was a complicated character. On one hand, he's a really nice guy. On the other hand, he doesn't get much screen time, so... First place for the gray area was mm, fair enough. And he doesn't really do anything heroic either, but he's still a really nice guy. Lyric, but nice. Now we have the, I think the officer of the hallway, Fox McCloud. He's not a very popular character, but I wanted to include him because I just love Star Fox. I felt like Fox deserved the gray area because... Sure, he didn't get a lot of screen time, but as the hallway officer, he had to deserve that for a reason. He did st stop Falco and Slippy from their devious needs, telling them to scat. And he did help Mario and Luigi find the janitor's closet when they were struggling to find it. I felt like that was just fair enough. Now we have Link. If this was about the video games, we he would have been much higher, but I had to put him in the great tier. He's a pretty annoying guy. He ignores Zelda's advice, he's skeptical about the Mario Brothers, and he, he just doesn't get Zelda's quote-unquote flirting to help him understand that Zelda likes Link. 
Link's just not that kind of guy. But I will put him higher for helping Mario with saving the school. That is some heroic deeds. And we do have to appreciate the struggle that he gets attracted by all the girls at the school. So, just a fair placement. Okay, now we're going to talk about the poor little Mushroom Man Toad. Toad doesn't get a lot of screen time, mostly just gets beat up. But we can't help but just feel so bad for the guy. He gets beat up almost every episode. Getting squashed by Wario, slammed by a door, nearly getting beat up by Falco and Slippy, over a stampede of fairy girls, and getting captured by Bowser. Man, we cannot help but just feel so bad for him and hope he gets better things going for him in season two. He's just a it's just sad to see see how much he gets bullied. Now we have Mr. Hand, or in the Smash game, Master Hand. He was a pretty easy guy to put in the great here. He is a pretty darn terrible principal. Instead of looking through the cameras to see what really happened, he just blames Mario and Luigi for being up Wario and Waluigi. Not thinking about what really happened, just doing what he sees. He does pretty lazy with his job. So yeah, I was gonna put him lower, but these guys uh, are still more questionable. Now we have Dark Pit. Again, not a lot of screen time as Pit, but he deserves to be far lower. He's not a really caring guy, just like, he's kind of like an emo kid. And he does hate Pit for his ways. Bro, if you hate Pit, why do you hang out with him? Like, why? But... He is still a hero in the series, not a villain. So, yeah, I felt like he deserved this high up. Now we have Professor T Tingle, is it? I think that's that's his name. Professor Tingle is a poor small teacher who gets bullied. He's disgraced and completely humiliated by his own words. We feel, I feel extremely bad for him. I will. I do give him some good points for staying up to Bowser, telling him to stop with his evil deeds. But he was beaten up and flew away by balloons. I do wonder what happened to him. But maybe we'll find out later on. Now we have Captain F. Or Captain Falcon. That's his name. Yeah, out of all Mario friends, he's... Obviously, the least good. He's a selfish, arrogant man who, who's mostly just in it for one thing. Himself. He doesn't really care about anyone but himself. And he does pretty bad with flirting with Daisy. And since he asked so many girls off to the dance in a list, we could tell that he's not that much of a good guy. But... He did help Mario in the final battle against Bowser. So, yeah. And he does care about Samus. But still. We can't call him a good guy for certain. Now we have Waluigi. Let's get the elf out of the room first. He is a humongous a bully. A bully. Sorry. He doesn't, he just cares about Wario and Rosalina, so that's a truth, that's one thing we could say bad about him, but his, no, good about him, sorry. And his care for Rosalina does, does put him up slightly above the evil tier. He was able to help in the final bow, battle against Bowser, but mostly just to save Rosalina, so we can't call him pure, but... He is planning on turning over a new leaf because of Rosalina, so... Rosalina, you're doing something great for us. Please do. 
Finishing off the gray area, we have Falco and Slippy. Okay, you're probably wondering why they aren't in the evil tier. Because, well, yes, they are awful people. Con men, to be precise. They did trick Mario and Luigi of giving them homework, and they were about to hurt up the fenceless toad. But what puts them above it is they were in the final battle against Bowser, and in the future they are heroes, so... Gray Area was good enough, because they do change over a new leaf eventually. Hopefully in Season 2. With all that said, now we're moving into the dark, gruesome people of the series. These characters are pure evil or awful men. Or women. Starting off this section, we have Wario. You're probably wondering, why is Wario in the evil, but Waluigi's in the gray? Well, Wario doesn't have too many redeeming moments. Yes, his careful Waluigi in the final battle does boost him up a little bit. That's, like, one good point we can give him. But that can be easily taken away because of how much of a bully he is. He doesn't really... We don't really see him care too much about Waluigi's problems, and... He probably leads Waluigi into becoming a bully. But his friendship with Waluigi, uh, we can... We can put him a little higher, which is why he's higher than the others. Now we have the trio of Ochucks, Mimin, and Dementio. If we were talking about the Paper Mario series, Dementio would have been at the very bottom, but we're only counting the show for this one, for these three. They're, the, they're loyal to Mr. L, always following his lead and doing whatever he commands. So yeah, that's one good thing. They're pretty loyal people, but that can be easily taken away given how much evil they are. They were they did join up Bowser to defeat the school, and they were beating up a poor Luigi and Miss and Daisy. So sh proving that they are completely loyal to Mr. L alone. Moving on, now we have King K. Rule. King K. Rule is kind of like maybe a headmaster of the show in the stage performance thing. Is he a student or a teacher? I'm not aware. But but what I can say is he's for sure an evil man. He is, a, he is polite to some of his acting students, but that's it. He calls Donkey Kong a brute multiple times. And he did join up with Bowser uh, in, the, in being evil. But I put him slightly higher because I kind of feel bad about what happened to his eye. Remember that? Ugh, poor guy. Now we have Dupless. The others were higher because they did at least a few good things, or have a few good things inside them. Dupless is just evil. He's just in it for his career alone. Imitation. And he doesn't really care what happens along with it. If there's a but he is a bit skeptical about Bowser, given how big of an ego he has, according to him. But he is still proud of joining Bowser and still imitating Mario. And not is not worried about getting breathed fire on. Sorry if I said that wrong. Moving on, now we have Pauline, Syrup, and Candy. If this was a diff if this was about the Mario Odyssey game, Pauline would have been in the good tier, but I cannot say that she's for sure good in the series, or at least start off. She's a completely rude person, especially to Princess Peach. She treats her she treats her and Daisy badly. And she does join Bowser in the final bet battle and she makes louis sorry link and mario extremely uncomfortable in the girls bathroom like seriously how less can you be girl yeah these three deserve to be here 
but there are three people who are just more evil. The bronze medal of evil goes to Mauser. Mauser's a completely se selfish man and is only loyal to Bowser. Yes, we could say being loyal is a good point, but his how he gets treated towards Bowser and he hasn't quit already, that's a whole different story. Like, the three minions, or Chuck's Minmin and Dimensional, were probably treated good by Mr. L. Mauser's just treated awful by Bowser, yet he continues being loyal to him. Seriously, man, you gotta quit by now. And let's not forget that he's willing to kill people with bombs, especially Rosalina. He's a, he's a rotten little mouse with a heart full of darkness. The Silver Mel of Evil goes to... Mr. L, the Green Thunder. Again, Mr. L is a completely selfish man. Sure, he starts off as the town, the school's hero, but afterwards, in the next episode, he's just a selfish man, beating people up and making fun of them. That leads everyone fearing him. And Mario called him out for being a big bully. And he was willing to actually kill Super Mario. If it weren't for Luigi over conversation his struggles and fears, Mario would have been dead. And we like, wow, this guy's just all evil. But he, I think he does care a little bit for his minions. Because if he didn't, they probably wouldn't have tried to help him. But there's one man ju a bit more evil than him. The gold medal of evil, and to no one's surprise, goes to the dangerous Bowser. Bowser is just all pure evil in this show. He's completely selfish, treats all the school students awful, flirts with Peach at Princess Peach, even though she clearly says no, threatens everyone in the school, nearly kills Mario, calls Luigi Greenpool, and treats his minions bad. There's literally nothing good about him. He did have a little talk with Mario, which we'll give good points for, but... And maybe he would have turned good if the crowd wasn't mocking him. But... We can't forget all the evil things he did in the series. So yeah. He gets the gold medal of evil. No questions asked, please. So yeah, that's my ranking of every single character. And if I have a comment section, I would love to hear your ranking of every single character in the show. Please make sure to subscribe and like this video. Please subscribe, though, because Super Smash Bros. Destiny is not treating me well right now. And I'm hoping to fix that soon. So, goodbye. I hope you guys had a good time watching this video, and I'll see you next time.